The excavation point uh, here at Vero Man was originally discovered in a uh, hundred years ago, uh, in 1913, 1914. The original analysis said that man was here about 13,000 years ago, and the scientific community said humans were not in the U.S. before 7,000 years ago. The rest of the scientific community didn't think that it was analyzed correctly. So what we needed to do is have the best people available to make sure that our conclusions were accepted by the scientific community. And that's where Dr. Adavazio and Andy Hemmings were so important to our effort. In 1915, the very idea that human beings had arrived in the New World before the extinction of all those interesting animals that we find here, let alone that they were here in the Ice Age, was very controversial. In the end, the finds here added to the controversy without per exactly resolving it. And that's, in fact, why we're here today. The old theory for humans coming to the United States supposedly came through the Bering Straits and they would have had to scamper between uh, Alaska and here and they, they, migration doesn't take place that way. The idea of everybody coming over the Bering Straits is now in question and there must have been several different routes at several different times to people of the U.S. and this site could shed light on a lot of that. What we're finding today not only augments what Sellards thought a century ago, that namely human beings were here in Vero Beach, let alone anywhere else in the New World. Not only when did they get here, but how did they make a living? How did they survive and in fact thrive on that rather alien Pleistocene landscape? And what we have behind us, in part, answers some of those kinds of questions. We have what appears to be a bison kill, intermixed with a number of other animals being exploited locally, and even some marine resources represented by teeth of shark and drumfish. These are animals that are being carried in 30 miles away from the, from the ocean at that time, and at a time when sea level is more than 300 feet lower. It's a very different proposition, and it really seems to be telling us people are here at a very early date. If what we're finding turns out to be true, it doesn't just inform us something interesting and novel about Vero or even Florida. It tells us something about the human condition that we've really never seen before, and it's very exciting to all of us. All of this began, it began with people that, uh, local people, they weren't scientists, they had an interest in this stuff and they started looking for it and found it. There was a kind of place where if you put a shovel in the ground, you're probably gonna find something. And a lot of people did just that. They would be putting in a rose bush or planting a tree and there was a bone. And you know, it's like, what is this? And it's just that kind of thinking is what brought this and sparked the interest that we have today. The people are still bringing things to us. I can remember back finding my first fossil and I said, wow, I just, I, I can't, I can't believe what this is. And I can imagine the, the, the excitement, someone picking up a bone, something like this in their backyard or, or wherever they're walking and having the same thrill. Look at this. This is something that walked around 10,000 years ago. This is the largest excavation on the East Coast by far and one of the most meticulous. So we're very proud of the way it's come out. We've talked to about 20,000 people, that is through talks and gatherings, open houses and fundraisers. Uh, we've had about 1,500 volunteers here. So it's been, really been a community effort. All of us involved in the project have really poured our hearts and souls into it. We love what we do and some of it's frustrating, some of it's very tedious and, and not particularly rewarding. Well, right now, we're at a point where every three days, we're finding more information, more new things than we did really in the first three seasons of excavation. The, the rate at which we're finding new material and finding out new information is rather staggering. It's, it's wonderful. We're all exhausted. We're dying. <laughs> but we couldn't be happier about what's going on. Archaeologists say it's not what you find, it's what you find out. Uh, this excavation has brought to light a great deal about Florida that was not known before. A lot of the, the 150 or so animals that came out of this were not known to be here. Um, and the climate change issues are, that we're discovering were not known. So we are be, going to be teaching people a great deal about the state that they know, the state that they've lived in uh, with new ideas and new thoughts. People are going to look back at this and say this is the start of really unfolding what was going on in Florida. Good information, good data, has no use-by date. The things that Sellards found a century ago, the things that we're finding today, somebody in a century is going to look back and go, oh, thank goodness they collected those little drips of pitch, the little broken shark's teeth, or drum teeth, or gar teeth. I hope that what we do and what we've done here 
continues to inspire people to open their minds and to further their own education. Not just going and getting PhDs, but to learn more about the environment around them and what things used to be like.